Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today I would like to discuss a recent outrage that has occurred in Sanford, Florida, which is a suburb of Orlando. I'm talking about the murder of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin by one George Zimmerman, a self-styled neighborhood watchman, actually one who was not registered as a neighborhood watchman with any official organization, who essentially shot this unarmed teenager in cold blood because he perceived this young man to be acting suspiciously. What was really the case was Trayvon Martin was walking home from the house of his girlfriend in a gated community. And as he was walking, George Zimmerman spotted him and thought that Trayvon Martin was acting suspiciously. So he started trailing Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin naturally was a bit perplexed at being trailed by this unknown individual, and he even made a cell phone call to his girlfriend, essentially expressing his worry that he was being followed. George Zimmerman apparently thought that Trayvon Martin was acting suspiciously because he was looking around and he just looked suspicious. So he called the police. The police instructed him to do nothing, to not go out and confront Trayvon Martin. However, George Zimmerman disobeyed those instructions, went out, and after an altercation, shot Trayvon Martin dead. The investigation of Trayvon Martin's body showed that he had no weapons. He just had a pack of Skittles and a bottle of iced tea. So clearly, this young man posed no threat to George Zimmerman. He had no criminal intentions. It was probably a bizarre presumption that he was doing anything suspicious. I'm sure all of us have walked slowly on occasion and looked around a particular area on occasion. Certainly walking and looking do not make a person suspicious or even remotely resembling a criminal. But a young man was killed in cold blood for no offense other than walking down a street. Now, I can't look into George Zimmerman's mind. I cannot determine whether racist prejudices played any role in his decision to shoot Trayvon Martin. Some have alleged that he did have some racial prejudices against African Americans and that he had warned against alleged black thieves and other kinds of suspicious individuals infiltrating that gated community. And to be sure, racism is a travesty. Others have stated that George Zimmerman himself is partly a minority individual, a Hispanic individual, so he would have no reason to be a racist. For me, that's not relevant. For me, what's relevant is that an innocent person has been shot and killed without having given any cause for alarm to any reasonable person. And what furthermore outrages me about this is George Zimmerman has not yet been arrested. He has not yet been put on trial. He has not yet been removed from civilized society so that he does not pose a danger to the rest of us. And the police of Sanford have essentially believed his story completely. He is alleging that he shot Trayvon Martin in self-defense. The police say they have no evidence to the contrary, even though multiple witnesses have spoken out and have stated that essentially Trayvon Martin was screaming for help right before George Zimmerman shot him. And the police have instead been trying to persuade these witnesses to change their story. Fortunately, there has been a substantial public outcry 
about this travesty, both on the internet in the forms of various petitions being signed and the story spreading on social media, as well as in the town of Sanford itself, where there have been protests held, and now a vote of no confidence in the city's police chief, Bill Lee. So there is some promising public pressure on this matter. However, it is still an outrage that George Zimmerman remains free. I really think in a civilized society, it is imperative that each one of us have the assurance that if we are peaceful individuals, if we pose no threat to anyone, and we just walk in a nice part of town also, that we're not going to be arbitrarily deprived of our lives by a vigilante, because that is what happened. George Zimmerman was not an official member of any neighborhood watch organization. Even if he had been, there is no legal authority for a neighborhood watchman to take actual enforcement action against an individual whom he deems to be suspicious. A person cannot just arrogate to himself the enforcement of criminal law. A person can act in self-defense, but that is quite different. A person cannot just go out and confront an individual who he thinks looks suspicious, and take matters into his own hands and shoot that individual. Otherwise, there is no rule of law. There is no due process. There is no opportunity for an individual like Trayvon Martin to comprehensively present his case and attempt to exonerate himself in any procedural forum. And it really appalls me that in the year 2012, in the United States of America, more than 235 years after the Declaration of Independence was enacted, individuals who have done absolutely nothing wrong can still be arbitrarily deprived of their lives at just the whim of a vigilante. Now, if George Zimmerman gets arrested, which I certainly hope that he is, he ought to be put on trial and be given all of the protections of due process that he has denied to Trayvon Martin. But what's more than that, I think it's important for the court that tries George Zimmerman to consider all possible penalties, including the death penalty. If George Zimmerman is found guilty on the basis of the evidence, then there should be an example that is set. Because no civilized society should allow the suspicions of a private citizen to lead to the deaths of innocents. It's not just about Trayvon Martin. It's about any one of us. Any one of us could have been in that position. And if it is true that George Zimmerman was not motivated by racism, then my argument on this point is even stronger. Any one of us who happens to, quote, look suspicious to anybody else with a gun can meet the same fate. And that is not something that we can tolerate as post-enlightenment, civilized human beings who respect individual rights and who respect the presumption of innocence. So I would like to join my voice to the call to bring George Zimmerman to justice. And furthermore, I would like to recommend that in penalizing George Zimmerman, should he be found guilty, all options, including the death penalty, be kept on the table. Thank you very much.